Good morning, everyone. My name is Kevin, and with Anna here, we are from the Kinkata Chart, hailing from uh, Cohen Ferry, Boston, in the United States. I will be telling you about a technology that we have been developing that enables uh, the decentralized upgrading of biomass, such as in cultural residues and forestry waste, such that our vision is to clean the biomass energy to provide the prosperity in terms of energy for cleansing. But why are we talking about biomass? Well, it turns out uh, biomass right now has a pretty interesting uh, space in the Australia uh, energy sector. Recently, the government has proposed uh, two energy-related guarantees for the future. One is that there should be energy should be reliable, and the second is that energy should be uh, low carbon emission. And we see this as uh, we foresee this as a tension going forward in the energy industry here, because traditionally. Uh, the uh, wind and solar and those sort of renewable energy are often, while they're clean, they are not very reliable, they are often chemical. On the other hand, fossil fuels such as coal or gas are uh, readily reliable, but on the other hand, they score low on the emission spectrum. On the other hand, that's where we see a lot of potential for biomass because it actually scores relatively high on both spectra. It's relatively reliable compared to uh, wind and solar. At the same time, uh, it can be uh, relatively renewable, uh, much more so than fossil fuel in terms of the uh, carbon intensity. So if we actually look at the biomass in Australia, it also has a pretty large potential. If we take the entire um, energy generation of Australia here today, and if we take stock of all the biomass that's available in the country, we find out that can actually power about 40% of the total energy. And yet today there is a paradox because we only see about 7% of that potential being fulfilled. And this gap is about $30 billion per year market. So the question is why is it that uh, biomass doesn't seem to be very sexy in uh, Australian Queensland? So we have various reasons, but traditionally people think of biomass as something that's very expensive and difficult to handle and process, right? Just imagine because a lot of these agricultural residues or forestry waste are located in dispersed rural areas and small pockets, and then you need to transport this wet, loose, and bulky waste for a long distance before it can be turned into a source of power. And to really reinforce that point, uh, let's just take a example, sort of scenario, of what happens if a coal power plant, for example in Queensland, were to us replace 10% of their coal energy with biomass, what would happen to that cost? So as a comparison, the equivalent coal energy cost will be this much. So if we were to do biomass uh, competitively, it needs to be less than that figure. So first, acquisition costs about $300,000, $60,000. And then there's a long distance transportation. And once the biomass gets on site, because it's often very fibrous, often what happens is a lot of energy needs to be spent uh, grinding it into small pieces, especially if the power plant uh, is operating on a floor that's bad design. So that adds to a post-processing premium of $100,000. And finally, if you pay all the salaries or collect all those biomass, you find that the cost really exceeds that of coal energy. What if now we pretend we have some sort of upgraded biomass where the transportation costs can be lower, and through upgrading, we can also lower this post-processing premium, such that potentially we could bring this um, biomass power to cost parity compared to coal. So what is this upgraded biomass that we're talking about? So what we're developing are uh, technologies which are small scale, low cost, and they enable the decentralized upgrading of biomass. So imagine reactors that can be latched onto the back of tractors or shipping containers and can be carried to the rural areas or the first areas where the biomass is actually present and do this conversion and upgrading on site before it is then transported. And so what we can do then is to turn something that looks like this into something that looks like this. It feels like coal, it looks like coal, mm -hmm. and also burns like coal, and therefore minimizes any kind of complications and handling process that the coal power plants needs to invest. The underlying process of this is called the uh, torrefaction. It's a process whereby raw biomass, when subject on the moderate heat for about half an hour, releases low energy molecules, which we can then capture and burn that as a source of heat to run a whole reaction, such that the entire system does not need any external energy or heat to run itself. At the same time, the solid phase 
and becomes the loses mass more so than the loses energy. And therefore, we achieve some sort of densification. Here is an illustration of what happens if we start fortifying uh, copper glass. You see that it turns brownish and then finally black, so it becomes more and more like coal as we raise the temperature. And the various benefits are captured in this table here. So in terms of volumetric density, we can raise it by about five times. So that means for the same truckload, you can load a lot more um, units of energy onto it, and therefore you reduce the transportation costs. Furthermore, uh, for fashion actually renders our mass hydrophobic, meaning that it's resistant against moisture attack, and we can therefore greatly extend its shelf life that addresses some of the uh, reliability issues of using this as a source of energy. And finally, and more importantly, uh, this process also reduces or increases the granulability of the uh, raw biomass, making it much less energy intensive to process the raw form that can go into the body. So you may ask, well, what's new about this technology? Because it's known that there are various biomass preprocessing or even for packet designs out there today, a lot of it in Europe and North America. Well, indeed, most of these uh, reactors are actually quite large. They are designed with uh, at least 100 pounds per day tank capacity and cost more than $1 million to uh, really deploy. So these, well, they are suitable for large scale agricultural mills or um, for forestry lumber mills. They are fundamentally compatible when we go talk about those dispersed biomass in uh, sort of decentralized conversion settings. In contrast, by using a scientific, a new scientific um, concept called oxygen link torrefaction, we show that we are able to uh, greatly simplify the reactor design, and therefore we can downsize the production capacity as well as the capex to a level that actually uh, will be a negligible kind of investment. Yeah, for the part of the cobalt tax. This is not as a fantasy, but something that we have actually uh, been building and testing. Uh, first, as part of my PhD thesis for the past five years uh, at MIT, we designed, model, and built and validated a lab scale reactor and uh, showed that it can work under various conditions with various kinds of biomass and that it can be operated stably for many hours. And right now, my full time job is to scale this up to a commercial readiness. And in addition to my technical expertise, I also have a lot of experience working in the biomass sector, including founding a company before that works in India and Kenya to turn agricultural residues into fertilizer and fuel. And I'll hand over to Anish. Back to that. Good morning, all. My name is Adish. I'm a master's student at Northeastern University in Boston. And I have experience working in a fertilizer company and a startup. So I'll run you through the pilot strategy, the growth strategy, the exit strategy, and what we give and offer to the Queensland. So let's say we have Kevin, who is a chief executive engineer from a power company X. Hi, Kevin. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, how can I help you? Well, uh, could you please give some information on what kind of fuel you use in your power plants? Sure. We run a 700 megawatt uh, of power plant. Uh, right now, uh, we have a coal mine that's located four kilometers away from our plant, which means it's just a matter of setting up a conveyor belt. And then we have our uh, recruitment coal at our site, which will cost us about three million pounds a year. All right. Is there anything that keeps you awake at night? Well, you know, uh, I think the coal industry, unfortunately, has got this bad name because the public sort of perception of that it's a really high emitting kind of uh, energy generation. And well, that's what we do very well. Uh, it's very difficult also sometimes for us to meet uh, some of the government policies or requirements for a low carbon future. All right. Would you be interested in a coal like fuel that has less emissions and it's at cost parity? Well, in the past, we actually have looked at alternative support, including biomass. And what we found is that, well, in places like Europe, people do coal fire the biomass they mix about 2% into the coal fire plant. And then uh, what happened is that for us, it requires a lot of capital upgrading. And it's also very difficult to process. It's a nightmare for us. But if you can actually produce for us something that is much more like coal and something that doesn't require a lot of change in the whole part, we're definitely happy to explore that. All right, thank you so much, Kevin. Well, the aim of our pilot plan is to deploy the decentralized reactors into the power plants. 
and gather the biomass feedstock from the vicinity of 40 kilometers. So this is how our aim is to have our decentralized system around, where we aim to reduce the fuel consumption by co of coal by 10% to meet the renewable energy generation target. So later, for the, this is the pilot project timeline of our project, where we start with scale up of the prototype. We are working on converting the lab-based prototype into a, into a reality where we can actually deploy those power plants, those reactors into the existing coal-fired power plants. So while, while working on the technical aspect of the prototype, we'll be looking at various biomass feedstock that are available in the vicinity of the power plants. So that will help us in giving us a better, well-informed design decisions. Eventually, at this stage, we own and operate the pilot and the reactors and we'll be sourcing locally the biomass from the vicinity and we'll be testing it to the various power plants in the region. So once we are done with the testing procedure, we move on to hiring a local team of uh, local expertise who can, to whom we can transfer our know-how and engineering and this will help us in, uh, in making sure that our technology is appropriate to use with the local expertise. And eventually, uh, we envision that our pilot is successful and we will expect the power plants to purchase uh, the reactors co with co-financing which will be manufacturing and assembling them. So here, here is the funding mechanism of the, uh, the various distribution of the funding that we are looking for. So in comparison of the equipment and development and the pilot for next 24 months, we are seeking for a fund of approximately $850,000. So, and we expect the funding mechanism to be in the terms of sales and revenue that we generate from our pilot, the grants from the Queensland based investment, and from the business development fund of approximately $242,000. So, what will the investors or business development fund will get investing the money in our pilot project? So initially, if we assume that our pilot project is successful, we expect the other power plants in the region to, to look and buy our own reactors and for which they can locally source the biomass and use and use to upgrade the procedure to, to use and uh, substitute their existing coal usage. So once we have tapped into the Queensland market, we look at the Australian market which is accountable to around $1.7 billion per year. But as we expand and explore, the same problem can be solved and can be addressed in the various countries like Canada, US and Germany where the power plants can use our own reactors and our story doesn't end here. Torrified biomass has multiple uses and we have found, found out that there are 1 billion users who uses, who uses solid fuel like charcoal in their cooking purposes. So this is where our technology can be deployed and locally they can produce from the agricultural waste to a solid fuel. And similar goes with the case with bio-based fertilizers. So let's talk about our commercialization strategy. So in the commercialization strategy, we will be targeting the coal co-firing power plants. And in, in this strategy, we will start manufacturing. We will start manufacturing and assembling the reactors so that we can have a strong technical know-how and the manufacturing capability which will keep us in a position to license our technology to various markets. And we also have an uh, experience of setting up a pilot in India and Kenya which has helped us to give a good market insight and has demonstrated a proof of concept. So in terms of generating the revenue, there are two revenue streams that our company will be generating the money from. First one is manufacturing and selling the reactors to the power plants which are using coal fire and the second is the licensing of the reactors. So based on our projection, we have found out that by 2023, we would have approximately $70 million of revenue with $1.7 billion of profit and reaching the break even by 2021. So let's, let's say we go public on New York Stock Exchange by 2025. So based on our based on the various growth scenarios from slow to medium to fast, and having a sensitivity analysis on the prevalent discount rate 
we have found that if the Queensland government invests in us in seven years' time, they will at least get the returns between 3x to 20x. And these seem to be a reasonable rate of return comparing the hardware technologies in the clean energy space. Well, our offer to Queensland is not limited only to the financial loans. We offer and create employment and income for in the rural areas and we create the value of approximately 12.5 million dollars by generating 70 megawatts of renewable energy which mitigates half a million tons of CO2 emission and as well effectively manage 400,000 400, tons of waste annually. So that's all from us. Uh, we are ready to answer the questions and for any further queries you can get it. That's with us at rashes at mit.edu.